Hello and welcome to this workshop for Cranoon and Oak, kicking off Cork County Summer Arts Programme. In this workshop, we're going to design a book cover. Things we'll need for this workshop include your favourite drawing materials, so pencils, erasers, sharpeners. We're also going to use rulers, uh, might do some collage, so hence the tape and the glue, scissors, paper. And we'll also need some colours if you choose to colour your artwork. So I'm going to be using markers, but you use whatever you like to draw and colour with. So let's look at some book covers. And I've included a few of my favourites here for you. And I'm going to be asking you to look at what needs to be on a book cover. So we need the title of the book. Uh, usually there's some images representing what's inside, not always though. And then the name of the author and illustrator if there is one. And often you'll also see a little logo, so that represents the publisher. Okay, so here we've got Emily Brown. Emily Brown's one of my favourite characters. I love those books. Okay. So I guess now we've got an idea of what a book cover needs. It's time for us to brainstorm ideas with quick sketches. So drawing little rectangles, just, just about there the height of my thumb, thumbnail sketches. And just playing around with lots of different ideas for the book cover I'm going to draw. And I'm going to be doing the Arabian Nights. Because those are a collection of stories that I absolutely love and I have loved all my life. So now we should know which idea we'd like to run with. It's time to pencil out our design. So we start that process by setting up some drawing guidelines. So I marked out some borders, I divided my page into thirds, so top third for a title, middle third for my illustration and the bottom third for a subtitle in this case. We don't know who the authors are of these stories. To start the illustration with some simple shapes and soft lines, I keep the lines nice and soft so it's easy for me to make changes if I need to, um, easy to erase, easy to work over as well. Use a little tape there to help with some of the spherical shapes. I highly recommend you do that, there's nothing wrong with that. And then had a nice guy to draw on top of. So now, finish the pencils, time to go over the line art. Now I'm using fine liners, but you can use whatever you have to hand. So you want to go over them very carefully. Uh, with, it can be pencil, if you're sticking with pencil. Fine liners, felt tips. The only thing I would say is be careful if you're going to be using any kind of uh, wet colours. Uh, like if you're going to use watercolour, pro markers. You want to use something that's not going to run when you go over them. And take your time with this, there's no need to rush. You want to make sure that you only go over the lines that you wish to keep. So for example, I can still see some guidelines in there. And if I rush, I run the risk of going over those with my pen. I don't want to do that. So take the time. I'm going to rub out all the unwanted pencil at the end. I'm going to make sure I only go over in pen what I wish to keep. And when it's time to go over the lettering, make sure you check the spelling before you use any pens. I've made that mistake myself. Done what I thought was lovely lettering and found out there was a spelling mistake. That often happens because when you're doing lettering like this, you're thinking about how it looks visually rather than how it reads. So you're using your drawing head rather than your reading head. So I did all my general outlines and decided I wanted to go in with some pattern. Initially, I was thinking this would just be black and white, so I wanted to do loads of pattern where I might have just used color. Just to vary it, create a sense of depth, make it more interesting. So once I've got all the lines in place, happy with it, I'm going to erase any visible pencil marks. So 
So now it's time to get out your favourite colours, if indeed you're intending to colour in your piece. And even if you're not, I've got a few tips for you. So one of those is that you use one colour at a time. So by that I mean, you know, if, if there's red or pink in this case, all over the page, that you, you use it in every instance that you need it. And then move on to the next one, the next and so on. Now I test out colours on a piece of scrap paper. Firstly, to make sure they work. And also, more importantly, maybe, to make sure that they're the colour that I need for the part I wish to colour in. So I'd highly recommend you do that. I use that for testing out pencil marks and stuff as well. Um, or even, you know, a pattern or something I want to use before I do it on the real drawing. So yeah, one of the things here is I was just going to do all flat colour, but I thought I'd try using the colour in a different way, and I recommend you do that. I'm not entirely sure it works, but it was really good to try it. It was good fun. Um, so I tried using kind of a pointillism, lots of dots. I thought it might be more fun, and also it, it wanted it to remind me of Middle Eastern patterns. So that's the other reason I went for that. And it was really good fun. I don't often use colour myself, so it was really good fun to play around with it in this way. So yeah, you know, just because you're using colour doesn't mean it all has to be continuous and flat and cover the area. Do patterns, stripes, zigzags, dots, circles, little stars. So how about using some other materials? I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a mixed media piece. So we'll try a different version of the same book. Um, but I'm going to use things that I found lying around the house. So I had this washi tape that I bought ages ago and I've got around to using. We've also got a little bit of origami paper. And maybe you don't have that, but perhaps you've got some wrapping paper or you've got um, a shopping bag, an interesting pattern, or maybe um, I just want to draw a pattern on a piece of paper yourself, and then you could use that as the basis for your design. So you notice here, I still put it the guidelines. You've got the guidelines marking out the third, so I've got my title at the top again, and subtitle down in the bottom third. I'm going to put my image in the centre, and. I'm going to use the washi tape. I decided I'd use that tape to represent the buildings. I'm going to try and make a drawing without drawing too much. So that's going to represent the verticals in the building, the towers and so on, the minarets. These patterns really reminded me of the Middle East. I think that's what they were staring at me from my desk, crying out for these. And then now I'm going to use this paper for the domes. And to make sure I get a nice shape, a symmetrical shape, folding them in half, and then I only have to do one cut, and that'll be the same with both sides. So play around with the placing of the objects before sticking them down. Obviously, be very careful when you're using scissors. The younger ones among you, you might want a little bit of help from an adult when you're doing this. I always remember to put the lid back on the glue when you're finished with it. <laughs> If your fingers get sticky, just, just rub them. So now when it comes to the lettering, I recommend choosing colours that suit your piece. And actually, I should have said, I deliberately restricted my colours, my choice of colours for this. Um, and I chose to use blues and greens, so I always use black. So I think I'll take this opportunity to try something different. And that's the end result.